Hello everyone, my name is Sally um, and uh, it is my very big pleasure today to have uh, Ijima-san and Yamauchi-san uh, here with me. And so first thing I would like to say is a uh, big uh, congratulations uh, with uh, having achieved the 17 verse uh, Femto Barn um, and such a big uh, and amazing uh, data set. And not only that, we also achieved a uh, record-breaking uh, luminosity. And this was all in the times of uh, pandemic. So my mm -hmm. first question to you would be, uh, what were the measures uh, that were taken both by Bell and SuperCAC B to achieve this result? Okay, so the measure we took is to, okay, because of this pandemic situation, uh, because uh, uh, travel from abroad was strictly uh, impossible. So uh, we <coughs> decided to uh, run the experiment only with the people uh, who were at the KEK at the time when the, the, the pandemic started. Then that uh, to cover the uh, whole uh, shift, uh, we decided to reduce the number of shifters, the local control room. Mm -hmm. so we usually have uh, two uh, control room shifters uh, who are able to operation, but uh, we uh, reduced it to just one. And then the other one uh, from remote. Mm -hmm. And so we improved the uh, uh, remote monitoring that worked uh, uh, well. And then that, uh, we have uh, another one uh, shifters are called BCG, that is a kind of interface between the accelerator and the belt tube. And uh, that was uh, also taken. But uh, uh, in the middle of the experiment, uh, we also moved that BCG shifter to the room on site KEK, apart from a uh, uh, super KD control room, who are just a social distancing purpose. That was our main uh, point that, uh, of our measures, yes. So this was uh, the situation in the control rooms. And so in general, uh, how exactly did the situation look like in the, on the KEK campus? Okay, uh, first of all, I'm Yamauchi, uh, the uh, KK director. First of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, inviting us to this uh, very interesting discussion. Mm -hmm. um, in April and May, when the COVID was at peak, or I should say first peak, uh, we requested most of the staff members of KK to work at home. And also we uh, almost closed the laboratory for the visiting researchers. Mm -hmm. This way, the number of uh, uh, people in the campus was reduced down to 30% of the normal situation. Mm -hmm. So one option was to stop the accelerator, I mean, super KKB accelerator, but you know, in the discussion, you people who are super KKB people showed a very strong enthusiasm that they want to continue the accelerator operation. So we uh, did uh, many things uh, to support the operation of the super KKB. When uh, uh, you know, operation of the laboratory is very difficult. So it, uh, I'm very thankful to the, all the people at super KKB and their two group to continue successfully the experiment and achieve the new luminosity record. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, it is, uh, I mean, it is outstanding and we have a very nice uh, data set collected and already we have shown a lot of uh, results uh, at ICEP. But do you think uh, there was an increased pressure because uh, we are relatively a young experiment now and we are trying to uh, establish ourselves uh, again on the particle physics map. Uh, did you feel some pressure? I don't know whether we call it a pressure or not, but uh, mm -hmm. we had a strong desire to mm -hmm. uh, uh, continue the experiment mm -hmm. uh, to produce the data. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you say that uh, we just started and if we stop the experiment and then the data size is so small that uh, uh, we cannot uh, enjoy physics, mm -hmm. and uh, also we are young uh, researchers like a graduate student or postdoc as a travel. You know. So mm -hmm. it was important for us to 
continue the experiment. Of course, there are many opinions that uh, uh, whether uh, we can do it under this pandemic situation. Mm -hmm. But uh, as Yamauchi-san said, that uh, thanks to uh, many people, not only Berto, but also Tsupakekubi and uh, uh, KK management and administration, that uh, we could do it. So we appreciate it very much. And um, maybe coming a little bit uh, back to the topic of uh, shifters and shifts, because I myself, I am, uh, I was a remote shifter. Um, I realized that, the, and you already mentioned the fact that there were only limited amount of people on the site that could take the shift. So I'm, if I'm not wrong, it should be around 50 people uh, splitting 24 hour shifts for yeah. many, many months. Uh, I think this is an extraordinary effort. Um, so I would like to just know um, if there is uh, something in place to somehow appreciate or thank our uh, colleagues for their uh, efforts in this past few months. Uh, yes. So uh, yeah, that too that uh, we uh, should appreciate very much that uh, the contribution of those people and that. Uh, uh, all of the Bell2 collaboration agrees. And so at the uh, Bell2 collaboration meeting held in June, mm -hmm. uh, the, the collaboration decided to uh, present the award, mm -hmm. so-called Bell2 Special Award for the uh, outstanding contribution of those people uh, who stayed at the KK and took shift for uh, three, three months. That's, that's that's really yeah that's really good to hear because without yeah without this extraordinary effort uh, it would be much harder so yeah i also personally would like to thank everyone um then i have um a question uh, regarding the situation so of course nobody was prepared for this kind of a pandemic uh, i think uh, i speak for most of the people um uh, however i know that um uh, a lot, uh, many people were affected differently. So, um, for example, researchers who have uh, preschool or school children or also uh, researchers with short-term con uh, contracts may have uh, had quite a different impact. And so uh, my question would be along the lines, uh, if uh, we have already thought about um, how to uh, mitigate this in the future? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, we made uh, some special rules or arrangements at KK mm -hmm. to cope with the various uh, problems caused by this uh, COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. One of them is to uh, give, you know, special vacations or special days off mm -hmm. to the people who have to take care of the school kids at home. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we have a nice nursery at mm -hmm. KK campus. So uh, uh, also we, uh, they can use this nursery to take uh, their kids while working at KK. And anyway, uh, it was uh, very fortunate that uh, uh, no staff members at vis or visiting researchers have found positive with the uh, COVID test so far. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we have many ideas to, uh, to you know, make us stronger against this COVID. So in the future, uh, unfortunately this COVID continues for some more time. So we do whatever we can do mm -hmm. to uh, cope with these uh, uh, problems. Yes, and um, yes, that's uh, very good to hear. And uh, I'm very glad to see that there are opportunities and for the people who may found it a bit harder to cope um, so, of course, a uh, lot of the questions were somehow until now uh, talking a bit about the coping mechanism. So it was a bit in the negative light, but um, maybe there are, I mean, in, we say that in everything bad, there is something good. So um, do you have uh, or can you think of some uh, positives that we can learn from this pandemic or that we have lived through this pandemic? Yeah, that's a very difficult question to answer because, you know, Mm -hmm. This is negative one, <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I'd say that uh, 
a model of research in high energy physics is based on the assumption that people can travel freely. Mm -hmm. okay. High energy physics has been developed by uh, international cooperation and competition, mm -hmm. which can be made possible by uh, free travel. So we have been uh, proud of this model of research, but we now recognize that this is a weak point of our uh, research style at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we need a new model now. Mm -hmm. We, for example, we had a, a virtual symposium at KEK in July to discuss a new model of research, but uh, we have not found good answer yet. But in any case, we recognize just we, this model of research has a problem mm -hmm. that has to be solved. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the positive side of the pandemic is that it triggered this realization and discussion. I guess also uh, maybe, um, yeah, there is something on the uh, environmental side that uh, maybe we travel a lot. Do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, have that, uh, yeah. Something that we realize that uh, there was some works uh, we need to travel anyway. Mm -hmm. For example, some hardware construction mm -hmm. at the laboratory, for example. And that part, we definitely need to travel. So, but uh, on the other hand, there are many, many. Uh, works that we can do uh, remotely. Mm -hmm. also, uh, it may be limited, but uh, still uh, uh, something that we can do. For example, under this pandemic, we could improve the speed of uh, doing analysis, for example, <laughs> writing paper and so on. So that uh, kind of, you know, you can find something that you can do. Exactly. exactly. So I, that, I think that's one of the cool things about being physicist, you somehow adapt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the physicist may have realized that uh, we might have uh, too many troubles, uh, troubles mm -hmm. that may be, uh, you know, reduced. And when talking about thinking uh, about it, I guess we are, yeah, we are going to talk also about future. So maybe from both of you, uh, what do, how do you see the future? Of course, we cannot predict what will mm -hmm. happen. Otherwise, it, we could adapt for that. But how do you see future in terms of what are the next uh, milestones uh, in terms of the luminosity and optics and running of our accelerator? OK, uh, so uh, as you as you know, that uh, we have just uh, uh, passed the world record uh, uh, peak luminosity, mm -hmm. and now it is 2.4 times 10 to 34. And uh, uh, then uh, in, after summer shutdown, uh, we will have a, a, a dedicated machine studies mm -hmm. to further improve the luminosity and uh, to uh, <coughs> at least double the luminosity mm -hmm. in the uh, autumn run. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we continue uh, from winter to next spring, and then uh, till the end of the calendar year 2021. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have a, a relatively long shutdown to replace one of our detector, the Batex detector. And by that time, we want to, we aim to achieving uh, uh, peak luminosity higher than 10 to 35, mm -hmm. which is uh, probably a, a major milestone for us. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of integrated luminosity, uh, we want to be aim at uh, achieving more than one bus autobahn accumulation that makes better to the real world reading uh, E plus E minus experiment. Thank you. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, I'm, well, I am very much looking forward um, to have um, 
this amount of data in the future so that we can then all analyze it. So um, thank you very much, uh, both to you, Toru, and uh, to Yama Uchi-san. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's probably it from my side. Okay, thank okay. you very much. And uh, I think the worst problem of this pandemic is that uh, everything is now so unforeseeable. We don't know when mm -hmm. it is settled, uh, mm -hmm. how much money does do the I mean, governments have to invest to cope with the problem associated with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing, nothing is known, nothing is predictable. So this is a very bad side of uh, 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 this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we have to start from that assumption. Okay, everything mm -hmm. is foreseeable. So that, so how we can uh, continue our experiment based on the assumption that everything is unforeseeable. So it's not easy, but mm -hmm. that's the only way that we have to uh, live in the next few years during until this uh, pandemic is settled. Exactly. But on the other hand, I think Bell2, Cake and um, Super Cake B, they we we have somehow shown the resilience, so I think uh, um, I am optimistic for the future. So that's that's from my <laughs> side as an experimentalist. So yes, yes. let's be optimistic. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.